people are probably confused. The thought process of what you want to do and, and all that, 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 it's when you, there's a line of thinking that you go into that you, it's like you were watching something and you're like, what am I watching this? <laughs> what do I give a fuck about this? Right. This is what starts to happen in your life pretty soon. You get these certain freedoms. Did you ever see the movie Office Space? Oh, yeah, of course. When the guy kept calling him on Saturday, he decided he wasn't going to go to work. He really did a great job of showing you the mental freedom he had. He got up, and the guy came over and said, what are you doing? He was like, I'm going fishing. It was all about a switch that went off in his head. Right. And, and he was happier. I mean, it's a spoiler alert, it's fucking however many years later. Well, yeah, it's but he was ha- years. He was happier working construction. And, like, that's... I think that part of my figure about 30, I need to look at, like, you don't know, not, not always everything goes to plan, obviously, I'm doing this, but maybe I don't, maybe money isn't the most important thing, which is weird for me, like, because that's really been my main focus. Listen, and everybody wants to make money, everybody right. wants to have a yacht, lead. everybody wants to have bitches and hoes, <laughs> we're, we're driven to that, okay, I was no different. My payoff was going to be A, by robbing somebody, or B, by making a big drug deal. I had the capacity to do neither. I failed at both of those fucking things. Okay? So, I, you know, everybody has a lottery ticket type of dream. We all do. You know? You go to college, you get a degree at something, you get a good job, you get promoted, you get a great salary. That's great. But we all want fucking wealth. That's what everybody wants. That's what we think. That's what we're programmed to think, that everything's going to be fine and fucking dandy. Exactly. I would love to see the cameras off in the Kardashian house. <laughs> That's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I love... It becomes different type of problems, but money doesn't take away problems. Money doesn't save lives. Money doesn't do a lot of things that people think. People live all these years to get money. You see them, they become producers, and they get creepy, and they tell their wives they're going to live in Monaco and all this shit, and it's, I don't know. Like, for me, one day, I realized I fell in love with comedy so hard that I was living in a room with a cot, some clothes, and I got to tell you something, I was the happiest I ever was in Seattle in that time. The only, the only thorn in my side and blessing in my side was Carol. The stripper. The stripper. She was a thorn in my side, but at the same time, she was an angel in my corner. Right. And for the result, look, I'm here. I'm here doing a podcast with you 20 years later. Her and I are still friends. Everything in my life at that time, in 1996, I was so happy in that office. That I'd gotten a place to live for one twenty five a month. Jesus. One twenty five a month? No shower. You don't need it at one twenty five a month. No, I joined the Y for twenty five bucks or whatever the gym was. And that's what I did. I worked out, I wrote jokes, and I got on stage at night. And I barely made it every fucking single day. I knew that all I had to do was get to the comedy club and I was going to get dinner. Lionel got on at 6. That means I could show up there at (laughs) 6.15. And Lionel would make me a BLT and give me all his mistakes and make me a steak and give me something to go. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I figured out a way to survive in Seattle. Right. I had a little telemarketing job a couple days a week, getting donations for cops. They paid me 12 bucks an hour. If I took 200 from them a week, I was lucky. And then on Thursdays, I would do a Pat Wilson gig. And on Fridays, I would get another gig for $150. My total income at the time was $1,100 a month. And Lee, no car. No car? No car. No prospects. Carol was my girlfriend, but she wasn't my ally. Okay, there's a big difference. Terry Clark, my wife today, is my ally. Right. It took me, and I can't lie to you, my first wife, Kathy, was an ally. She changed during the relationship. People do change during relationships. 
you know, people do change during relationships, and sometimes you see that person for what they are. See, weddings and marriages and shit and engagements make you see what you want to see. Right. And once the honeymoon phase is over, as they call it, mm -hmm. that's when the problems begin. I don't know about you, but I have I have a, like a specific one friend in mind. In mind, I met him when I first moved here. He was probably like forty five. He never like his his ex wife. What the fuck was that? Someone's angry in another office, I guess. Um, he never his ex wife wouldn't let him see his kids. They lived in Newport Beach. But it, they were still going after him for child support. Like, she was w w wealthy from her family. He was working night and day, but, like, double shift to pay this stuff off. And he uh, he ended up passing away this year in, a, in an accident. In a motorcycle accident. Yeah. And uh, and, that, and that made me think, because he was happy when he got married. Like, the, you're happy. And you, I, I know you can't think that way, because not every relationship is going to end that way. But I don't. I don't want to. I would never want to end up like that. I would never want to have my had to not be able to see my kids or and and because you just married the wrong per. That's a big thing. Like you just married the wrong person. That's fucking. That's a big. That's scary. You want to make sure you're sure. I married the wrong person, and she married the wrong person. Absolutely, we both made a mistake. And I had the child in 1990 which made me 27 years old. And at that time, I could not take care of myself. 27? I'd love to tell you people at home that I could take care. I knew how to take care of myself on the street. I knew how to finagle people. But I was not consistent. I was not a consistent human being. I could not have your money on the first because cocaine came first. When I had the child, like I said, I did everything I could. I worked, I paid rent, I did what I could. But my heart wasn't in it. This was not what I expected out of life. This is it. This is it. I got a fucking slave all week on a roof to come home. You know, this was not it. This was not the life I was seeing. People holding hands, running through a fucking park. I'm working six days a week. I'm working six days a week. She's working four days a week. We're barely fucking making it. And the one day off a week, you don't get to do what you want to do. No, I'm with them and talking about whatever shit they want to do. I, I became very unhappy. To me, I wanted the American picture. I was in jail. My parents died when I was at a young age. Here I was. I had the opportunity. And now that I was right there in the game, I did not fucking want it. I did not want it. I loved that little girl with all my heart, but I did not want this. It was terribly. And guess what? She didn't want it either. And this is why I pay I pay for this daily every day. But it's so weird, like I said to you last night after we did the spot at the fourth wall, that Lee, you keep meeting women. Ladies, you're listening to this too. You know, when you're when you're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, you have the disposition of this man you're gonna meet. Well, guess by, by the time you're 32, your fucking uh, mor mor morals or your whatever. Standards. Your standards drop a lot. They drop a lot. Because you start looking, and it's the same with money. <laughs> you know? You, you just want to be happy. You just some... But it's nice that I could... What if I fucking could fly you to Monaco to eat your pussy? That's great. But if I didn't make you laugh and my bad breath and my feet stunk... It wouldn't be a good experience for you, would it? But what if I just took you to the park and ate your pussy and made you laugh and held you the right way? Money can't. People were so... For 20 years, that's it. I thought a little bit of money was going to change my life. I'd have friends and... You don't want that money. I have no use for money anymore at all. At all. I don't have the same desires I had. I'm happy going to jiu-jitsu and fucking... We go to fucking Papa Do's and I don't need what what did you what did you want? What did you think was gonna happen? I don't know. I, I, I don't that know. I was gonna get a BMW and get an assistant. Oh you and yeah. Tell people to no. sit, go to Starbucks and get me <laughs> coffee with Sai Latte and a little bit of foam, foam on the side. I was gonna give orders. That would you 
people wanted out of me, that was never going to happen in my life. No matter what you give me, that's never going to happen in my life. I don't want that. I never wanted that, a fucking assistant. Who's that? You know what I'm saying? Like, really, a fucking assistant as an actor or a comic? I don't like none of that shit, you know? So what, what do you want me to change? So money's not going to do nothing. Yeah, a couple so, years ago, you were thinking about getting a Cadillac, and you I, didn't get it. No, I want everybody to have money, but I want you to go, I want you to go for money to be comfortable. I don't, I don't want you to reach for this test of rose of money so you can buy a house for $8 million. And if it happens, I fucking love it. But when I was doing that, I was getting nowhere because everything seemed minute to me. And I, and I wasn't going to do the work anyway. See, we all want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to die. We all just want a fucking Testarossa and six chicks with us all the time and for us to be the life of the fucking party. But that costs money. It's $12 a fucking cocktail, isn't it? It's 25 to park. Yeah. It's 100 just to walk in there. You have to see what your standards are. We were talking about my other buddy that I grew up with. That he's my brother. I love him with all my heart. But every chick he meets comes off a relationship with a guy owned like a baseball team. <laughs> so he can't take it to McDonald's. He's got to be somebody else. Two years in, the relationship breaks up because they realize that's not who he is. If we tell our significant other in the beat, like by the time I got to Terry, I knew the rules already. I was 40, I was 37, she was 30. I knew already. As much as, and, and, and I'll bring, Terry hasn't been on the podcast in two years and we'll discuss it. She felt I was pushing her away at parts of our relationship. I wasn't pushing her away. I was just setting boundaries for the future. Because all my life, we all do as men, the first six months, we tell you whatever the fuck we want to hear as long as we get in your pants. And then one day we got to pay for that fucking check. Then we got to pay that tab, and now they fall apart. Because we love everything. Oh, yeah. I want to save white monkeys in Africa. So do I. You know, we don't want to do nothing. We just want to dick so. <laughs> What the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody... <laughs> Why did you like him? What did he do? He did an error. I knew a second ago, but now it's... <laughs> keep, just keep going Went from where you told it. Cause then... Okay. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got? 